Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony is starting. Please welcome to the stage School of Journalism Director Willow Bay. Hello, everyone. It is my extraordinary pleasure to welcome you to your commencement ceremony. <laughs> on behalf of our faculty and staff, thank you for joining us on this very special day. As you all know, I'm Willow Bay, director of the Annenberg School of Journalism. And I'm standing here today before you brimming with pride, filled with excitement about what the future holds for all of you. I am, we are incredibly proud of you, this class of 2017, of all that you've accomplished, and we're proud of the journey that we've shared with you. You know, I've been here for a couple of years, and faculty said to me, you'll get over it. You know, that feeling where you're just bursting with pride and excitement for all these students. Ah, that's a rookie thing, you'll get over it. But I'm standing here quelling. I'm quelling. So I'm guessing that's because you, this class of 2017, is just plain special. Okay. All right, I'm glad we can all agree that that is true. What's also true is that earning a degree from the Annenberg School is a singular accomplishment by any measure. And I know it's one that you all value, as do your families, but it's also one that is recognized by future employers, by people in the journalism and public relations industries. They know just what an Annenberg degree means. And when I think about this very special class of 2017 and the hopes that I have for all of you, it's that you truly seize this moment because you're heading into careers at honestly the most extraordinary time. Just think about it. Can you imagine a time when all the things that you study, all the aspects of communication, the use of language and images, the creation and dissemination of messages, the ability to engage with diverse audiences were more central to the time that we're living in? Can you imagine a time when your fields, journalism and public relations, were more relevant to an era? Or when changes in those fields were happening more rapidly than they are happening right now? Or frankly, when those changes cut into the val our values more? When press freedoms and the role of the press in covering our most significant institutions, so essential to who we are as a people, to who we are as a nation, we're more under siege. So my very special class of 2017, as you enter these fields, your moment is now. You will forge the future of journalism and public relations. You have the knowledge you most certainly have the energy. And we know that you have the skills. In fact, I know you all have a very special skill that you've developed here at Annenberg. And it may not be one that you'll put on your resume. But trust me, it is one that will serve you well as you lead these industries into this extremely exciting, but also very turbulent future. It is an ability to listen to listen actively, looking for insights, to listen critically for what's not being said as much as what is, as much as for what is, to listen with compassion and with empathy, listening by putting yourself in someone else's shoes. And that skill has never been more important than it is today. In today's world where so many are shouting to be heard, whose anger and frustration are no longer simmering beneath the surface, but exploding into open air and open arenas, and sometimes open airplane aisles. In a world where so many still go unheard, that skill of listening has never been more in demand and has never been more critical. So take that skill along with the other accomplishments and expertise that you've acquired here 
and use it to propel your journey, whether it's as future scholars or future industry leaders. And use it in your new role as USC Annenberg alumni of this very special class of 2017 to fulfill the vision of our founder, Walter Annenberg, who charged us with using communications to be of service to all people. So now it is my honor to introduce people who I know are very special to you, my Annenberg colleagues. Would all of our faculty and staff please stand so we can recognize your dedication and your work? And now I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the people who have shared this journey with you, who have challenged you, who have encouraged you, and who have loved you every step of the way. Would the parents of our graduates please stand? That's right, your love and support and your tuition payments have contributed immensely to the success of this class. So we thank you. And would the grandparents please stand and sisters and brothers and cousins and other members of family and spouses. Our graduates thank you and so do we. So thank you, graduates, for joining us in welcoming a lot of other people who surround you beaming with pride, just like I do. And now it's my enormous pleasure to introduce our graduation speaker today, Leon Krauss. As the Wallace... Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> As the Wallace Annenberg Chair in Journalism and Communication, Leon has brought enormous depth and breadth of expertise as an author, an award-winning journalist, an Emmy-winning news anchor right here to USC Annenberg to help us deepen our understanding of and appreciation for community. Leon has an incredible ability to unearth the rich details of daily life and to mine them for powerful insights and to build a tapestry of our shared human experience. A native of Mexico and a longtime chronicler of U.S. politics, immigration, and the lives of Angelinos, Krauss serves as the main anchor at Univision's KMEX station in Los Angeles, and he also regularly appears on Fusion. His recent project, a collection of on-the-street interviews of Hispanic residents in Los Angeles, titled La Mesa, has been broadcast by Univision and curated in his latest book of the same name. This project also became the inspiration for his course here at Annenberg, for which he led students in crafting multidisciplinary portraits of family life in Los Angeles. He embedded our students with three Latino families, and then he guided and mentored them as they produced documentary videos and text stories. We're thrilled to have had him spend the year here, and we're just as thrilled to welcome him to this stage, Leon Krauss. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Willow. Good morning, everyone, and thank you all for being here today. First, I would like to uh, thank my colleagues, the USC Annenberg Journalism and Public Relations faculty. It has been a great, great privilege to be part of this remarkable team of uh, journalists and professors. The discipline, passion, and work ethic of each of these students is a testament to your devotion to the noble art of teaching, so congratulations to you as well on this graduation day. I am uh, truly honored to be here this morning with the first generation of journalists and public relations professionals to graduate from USC during a particularly difficult and thought-provoking time for both our crafts. For the first time in modern American history, we face a government that is openly hostile to what we do. Yeah. 
This should not be taken lightly. A healthy and vibrant democracy is intimately related to a healthy and vibrant public discourse. And believe me, I would know. I am Mexican, like Willow said, and in Mexico, being a journalist, an honest journalist, has always been a challenge. For years, governments in Mexico at every level have worked to undermine, diminish, and threaten our profession. Active censorship and self-censorship, which can be just as damaging sometimes, obstructs what we do every single day. And now, in the age of terror that has wounded so many places in my country, being a journalist has become a deadly endeavor for too many of my colleagues, of our colleagues, of your colleagues. The one lesson I have learned from journalism's plight in my home country, and it's an important one, is that no one, no one but the autocratically inclined Corrupt politicians, messianic figures, criminal organizations, no one but them benefits from a weakened journalistic community. From weakening... From weakening our capacity to tell a trustworthy, captivating, and truthful story. Keep that in mind. Now, in the United States, we are facing some of those same threats. So make no mistake, everyone, you are graduating in a tough, rough, aggressively secretive, morally demanding time. And to this I say, congratulations. <laughs> what better time to be a journalist, a PR professional, a storyteller, a communicator. What better time to be out there seeking the truth, asking uncomfortable questions, holding the powerful accountable, sniffing for that unmistakable stench of corruption and impunity. No better time. You have chosen wisely, and I'm proud of you. The question you now face is, what to do next? I imagine many of you are already looking forward to facing our favorite prey, my favorite prey, politicians. <laughs> They're wonderful. <laughs> I don't blame you, I don't blame you. There are few things more entertaining and fulfilling and important than successfully confronting a powerful political figure. I know what that feels like. Three years ago, I uh, asked, during an interview, I asked Enrique Peña Nieto, the president of Mexico, about the possibility of the famous El Chapo Guzman, whom Peña Nieto had just captured, escaping from prison once again. The president of Mexico told me it would be impossible for that to happen. <laughs> he looked me in the eye and he said, it would be truly unforgivable. That were his exact words. Truly unforgivable. Nice, meaty words to hear from the mouth of a president. So you can imagine my journalistic glee when just a few months later, El Chapo climbed down from his cell into a tunnel and fled. <laughs> Peña Nieto's words in that interview with me haunted him for a while, for a long time, even after he managed to catch Guzman again. So it was fulfilling. There's a deep satisfaction in holding the powerful accountable in showing them the boundaries of their power, the clear boundaries of their power, in being their fair but implacable adversary. So I really don't blame you if your dream is to go to Washington and run around the halls of Congress, crafting clever spin, setting the agenda, or, or perhaps even sitting inside the White House briefing room one day, stomping Sean Spicer <laughs> with, a, with a nifty, well-informed question. It's not that hard. If you, if, you chose, if you chose any of that, I wouldn't blame you. I understand the allure of politics and political reporting, but let me suggest today a different path. If what you want is to take a stand against nativism, against racism, against prejudice, 
against half truths, against the assault on minorities, against dark money in politics, against misogyny, against corruption, against poverty and inequality, against that insulting, infuriating label that calls what we do fake, focus not on the powerful, but on the powerless. I, I personally became a journalist not to tell the story of the powerful and visible, but to tell the story of the powerless and invisible. I believe, for example, and my students, some of you are here, I believe, for example, in the significance of telling the story of an immigrant, a deeply religious father of eight daughters who decided to emigrate to a country he deeply and genuinely admired and which he thought would provide a safe, respectful place to bring up eight young women. An immigrant who still works to this day with his hands as a contractor, as a builder, a man who built his own house and has managed to raise poised, elegant, and incredibly productive American women like you, even if five of them are undocumented. His story is more important than that of any politician. His name is Luis Canales. I believe in the significance of the story of an undocumented immigrant, a cheerleading, dancing high school junior who dreams of going to college for a degree in women's studies and defines herself as a fierce feminist who just might also want to be like Beyonce and can't imagine herself going back to Mexico. A girl who embodies everything that's good and admirable about American womanhood and yet still must live with the fact that she might not be able to legally work in this country or go to the college of her choosing in this country, a country she rightfully considers her own. Her name is Dalia Carmona. Her story is more important than that of any politician. I believe in the significance of the story of an immigrant, a giant of a man who has worked 18 hours a day for the last 30 years of his life just to achieve his dream of owning a business, a wonderful, delicious bakery in Los Angeles, in which he mostly employs undocumented immigrants because he says everyone deserves a better life in the United States. A man who through his hard work, through his quintessentially, and this is crucial guys, through his quintessentially American hard work, sent his kids to college and bought the house he grew up in back in Mexico for his ailing mother. His name is Agustin Aleman. And yes, his story is more important than that of any politician. The only way to really counter prejudice is to uncover its consequences, its social, emotional, and cultural consequences. And you can only do that with the power, the immense power of storytelling. And believe me, people want to tell their stories. Don't let anyone convince you otherwise. Five years ago, working for Univision, I bought a small plastic round table at Home Depot, along with a couple of plastic chairs and a foldable cart to carry them around. I began to set up the table on corners chosen completely at random all around Los Angeles, with two cameras a safe distance away. Then I sat and asked people to join me. I wanted only one thing to ask them about their lives. Nothing more, but nothing less. No notes, no pre-production, no makeup for TV, no suit, no tie, no fancy handkerchief, no news anchory histrionics, nothing. Only essential community storytelling. I didn't know what would happen. I thought maybe people would just stand up after the first few questions. Maybe, I thought, some might even feel insulted by my prodding. The exact opposite happened. People opened like books suddenly dropped on the floor. 
They spoke of their parents and grandparents and the sights and sounds of their childhoods. They reminisced about the last time they saw the small towns they were born in, never to return. They told me about their plight across the border, carrying their children in their arms, children who would grow up here as American, as American as any child born a citizen. And then they spoke of their lives in this blessed country, the United States, a country they appreciate, they value, a country they love, a country, by the way, they love just as much as the Irish, the Italians, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Germans, who all came before them. They told me of the businesses they had managed to build, of learning a language that was not their own, of singing the Star Spangled Banner, of finding a place in a community that slowly but surely became home. And they spoke proudly of their children, like you guys, going to college, earning a scholarship, like some of you guys, while their parents worked two or three jobs at a factory just up the street right here, or a kitchen, or even the fields of the Central Valley. These are the stories I've heard, hundreds of them, each one a tiny place of the great American tapestry, each one an affirmation of the great American ideal, and yes, yes, each one a refutation of nativist prejudice. And that is why I urge you to resist the call for now, resist the call of the great political bubble. And that is why I urge you to also resist the call of the four oppressive walls of the TV studio. Rein in your ego. Remember that you, as journalists and storytellers, practice what should be the humblest, humblest of professions. Because in the end, we ask questions. We only ask questions. We don't offer opinions, we offer facts. No opinion, no opinion has ever had greater significance than a real in-depth investigation. Think about it. There is simply no opinion equivalent to the Watergate investigation. And that's precisely why, as storytellers, we confront the abuse of power not through activism, but through exploration. We mount relentless and fierce and brave opposition to the abuse of power, not through our opinions, but through our questions, our prodding, and our uncovering. A while ago, maybe 20 years ago, I faced a particularly difficult story about corruption in Mexico. I didn't know what to do with my sources or the story I, I saw unfolding in front of my eyes. When I asked a colleague and dear friend of mine for advice, he cryptically told me, ante la duda, haz periodismo. When in doubt, go be a journalist. I hated him then because the last thing I needed was some sort of abstract Yoda-like advice. <laughs> but he was right. When in doubt, go be a journalist. Go out there. Grab a camera, grab a microphone, but most of all, grab pen and paper. Look people in the eye. Listen to them. Really listen to them. Ask them about their lives. Take them back to childhood. Ask about their dreams and anxieties. Uncover their everyday struggles. Break bread with them. Find out where and how they fit in this great, great puzzle that is American life. Go out there and discover the common bonds that unite us all. In an acrimonious time, in a time of division, anger, and bitterness, believe me, there is no greater calling. So go and tell the story. Tell the story, not of the powerful, but of the powerless. Make the invisible visible. When in doubt, indeed, go be a journalist. Go tell a story. But most of all, my friends, fight on.
Wow. Thank you, Leon. Now it is my honor to introduce the Dean of the USC Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism, Dr. Ernest J. Wilson III. As you all know, for the last 10 years, Dr. Wilson has been instrumental in leading USC Annenberg's remarkable community of scholars and practitioners. Under his leadership, USC Annenberg has expanded its joint faculty across journalism, public relation, and communication, as well as cross-school centers and programs, such as M2E and Annenberg Innovation Lab. Created new courses that ensure that students possess the values and competencies to operate in a media and cultural environment roiled by technological change and uncertainties. And embarked on online education and expanded global exchange programs. Dean Wilson's forward-thinking vision also led the design and construction of our transformative Wallace Annenberg Hall. That's worth an applause, everybody. That's and as he concludes his tenure as dean, I know that he's thrilled to be directing the Center for Third Space Thinking at USC Annenberg and furthering his passion for teaching, attracting, retaining, and effectively deploying a new kind of talent for the digital age. So please join me in thanking USC Annenberg Dean Ernest Wilson for his tremendous leadership over the last decade and in welcoming him onto the stage. Ernie. Thank you for those very kind remarks, Willow. Um, it has been a great 10 years. One of the things that gives me the greatest amount of pleasure right now and satisfaction and hope for the future is that the next dean of the Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism will be Willow Bay. <laughs> The school is in very good hands. Uh, I want to take a couple, I just want to take a couple minutes to talk about some of the lessons uh, that I've learned over the past uh, 10 years or so. But I was really inspired by the speaker this morning, and so I thought I will start off by singing the theme to Star Trek. <laughs> Woo! I, I, I can't, I mean, it really is harder than it looks. For those of you who, uh, who saw the larger uh, ceremony today, um, I was also deeply inspired by what Leon, uh, the message that he brought to us. It's a very important message, uh, both about the times that we live in and the great responsibilities, but also opportunities for all of you in this tent today. So I want to start off with uh, two statistics. You talk about the importance of facts and so forth. Uh, one statistic uh, that is especially directed toward the parents of our graduates, and that is that um, according to our research, within one year of graduating, 96% of our students have a job. 96%. So be of good cheer, it's all gonna work out. Don't worry, you know, don't worry about it. The other statistic I like, uh, it's a much, it's a different number, it's, it's one. So there is a rating service called QS Global and they evaluate communication and media and journalism schools all around the world and I'm delighted to report that for the last three years, you know who has been number one. Absolutely number one. And that really is a consequence of the great work that the faculty have been doing um, and the great students we get. Um, but I, I think that's important to kind of keep in mind as well. So what I'd like to do is share with you four key points that you might want to keep in mind as you move out into the workplace. Um, and I sort of thought about, well, what made me leave my hometown of Washington, D.C., otherwise known as the swamp, um, to move out to La La Land? I said, well, let me, let me think about that. So I went back. I've been keeping a, a journal 
a diary, which I also recommend that you do. So I went back and looked at my diary for 2006, 2007, um, and then I looked back to my earliest diaries, which I started when I was in high school. And there were wonderful stories about George Washington and Thomas Jefferson in my high school. That's a joke, folks. I mean, <laughs> not that bad. Um, but so I, I looked at the, the reasons that I told myself that when I get to this intersection of whether to stay in D.C. or move to L.A., why should I leave D.C.? Why should I come to L.A.? So there were four questions that I wrote myself and that I recommend to you to consider. Number one, is the work that you are going to do important? Is it important in some way? Secondly, is it with people you like? Thirdly, does the job have the resources to support you and your vision and your mission? And fourthly, and equally important, is it fun? Okay. And I want to lay those out because it's a pretty decent chance that when you start off, you will find yourself working for, on unimportant issues, for people you hate, for no money, and it's not fun. Okay, so this, get ready for that too. But um, largely because you are who you are, you're smart, you're savvy, you're well-educated, um, you should be able to hit all four of those marks because of your education at the Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism. And both um, Willow and Leon pointed to that, which is what better time in the history of the United States to be a journalist, a media professional, a public relations professional. Now is the time to do that. So in some ways, if you stick to your craft, if you stick to your vision, you will be doing important work because journalism and public relations and media are among the most important things reshaping and shaping the entire world, not just in LA, not just in California, but around the world. So do the important thing, even if that's a little bit more risky. And important could include the importance of your family. That's a hugely important. Some of you may say, I want to stay close to my family for the first couple of years, and that's important. Uh, professionalism is important. Maybe you have an opportunity to have a great job with the person who runs the institution that you most admire. That's important. But I, I do believe, and I want to echo what my uh, colleagues have said, is look for the important stuff. Look at issues of gender equality. Look at ways to help save the planet. Look at environmental issues. Look at how to build stronger and more democratic institutions. So that's recommendation number one. And by the way, just to sort of hint at where some of this is going for, I've been lucky over the past 10 years because almost each and every day, at least a couple of those four things have worked out. Not every day, but on most days, most of those four things have really worked. Um, and for that, I, I consider that a great blessing. The other great blessing is work with people you like. Don't work with, a, with uh, jerks. <laughs> there is a rule, right, that says don't hire jerks. And if you're lucky, you know, before you go and decide a place where you're going to spend eight hours a day, try to get a sense of whether they're nice people or bad people. It is much hipper to work with nice people. It's more fun. You learn things about yourself and others. I think it was the French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre who said that hell is other people. <laughs> so keep that in mind, but there is redemption possible because heaven is also other people. So keep that in mind. So if you're going to go work someplace, don't work with jerks if you can possibly help it, especially if your boss is a jerk. That's a little harder, but you have to be a little more circumspect in pointing out to your boss that he or she is a jerk. Um, I do think that working at the, and, and studying at the Annenberg School is really special. Uh, Henry Kissinger, the former Secretary of State, once said that academic politics are so vicious 
because the stakes are so low. That the politics are vicious because the stakes are small. At the Annenberg School, the stakes are really big. It's the future of democracy. It's the future of democracy. It's the future of a free press. It's the future of free thought. Every day, faculty, colleagues, um, working people in the building, students come in as individuals every morning, 2,400 students, a couple hundred people who are working there. And it's like this magical thing happens. They walk in as individuals and suddenly they're a family. They're a collective. They are working together and that's probably because, well, we're better than everybody else, but other than that, um, we are working on something important and we don't want to waste time and we know that we've got to be committed to the future of, of democracy. I think, and Willow mentioned this a bit, that an example of that is Wallace Annenberg. How many of you have seen Wallace Annenberg Hall? Okay. And I, I will suggest to the parents and friends, if you haven't had a chance to go see the hall, please go see it partially because it was invented and designed by students and faculty. It did not automatically appear. We met for a year with one another, talking to one another about what needs to be in the building, what value should it express. And so we shaped the architecture and now the architecture is shaping us and that is possible because we work together. There were very few jerks in this process. It's mostly nice people, and nice, smart, committed people produced a great building which in turn contributes to our understanding of inclusion and what it means to be nice and professional, uh, et cetera. Uh, the issue of resources is important. I'm, I'm not gonna dwell on that. When, when I was recruited to be the dean of the Annenberg School for Communication, uh, the leadership of the university said, you know, money is really important, fundraising is really important, and you need the money that you need to make a great school. And I said, that's a great idea. And then I, I read the small print, it says, and you will go out and raise all that money in order to do that. But uh, it was a collective exercise, and we managed to uh, hit the numbers that the university uh, expected and to go beyond that. But, so money is important. So if you're gonna have a, a gig, or when you have a gig, make sure that you have what it takes to be successful in that job. Not just money, but do you have time to do the job that you're being expected to do? Do you have the colleagues and friends and Trojan family that you can draw on to be successful in that mission? So when we talk about resources, it's not just cash, it's also relationships. And no one can be better prepared than an Annenberg graduate to go out into the world to talk to the family of at the Annenberg family and the university family, USA. And finally, um, and I say this especially uh, at this stage in my life, having known George Washington and Thomas Jefferson as well as I did, is the fun part. Uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure on you to work 18-hour days, seven days a week, always looking at a screen, and some of that is necessary, but I strongly advise that you build in a balance between your work life and your family life and your friend life and your fun life. And so seek out joy. Many of us probably know friends or family uh, other colleagues who said, I'm proud to say I've never had a vacation, or I haven't had a vacation in five years. Uh, maybe a vacation in one or two years you have, but not five years. And so I just counsel you um, to try to build into your life a search for joy. And that search for joy begins by having relationships and friendships and reaching out to other people. And I hope that the Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism, the, especially the Annenberg School for Journalism, has been that to you. Uh, you are very special to me because I'm graduating also this year. Um, I'm gonna graduate out of the deanship. 
and my dear wife, the real Professor Wilson, uh, and I are going to go spend a year up at the USC of the North, otherwise known as Stanford University. Um, but I'll, we'll try to enlighten them, try to you know, bring them along, bring them along. But again, I, I just uh, hope you do keep in mind the idea of what's important to you, of the people that you work with, the resources that you have, and also to build into your life fulfillment and fun. And with that, God bless and fight on. Just to commemorate properly Dean Wilson's graduation, Francille, will you stand and will you all please stand and give them both our deepest gratitude. Y'all ready for some diplomas? Yeah. Hi. We're going to begin with the presentation of the master's diplomas. Professor Vince Gonzalez um, will join me upstage to present the diplomas. Professor Judy Muller will assist us in reading the names of our master's degree journalism and public relations graduates. Students, here are some instructions. Please present the card from your chair to Professor Muller. Say your name clearly. Guests, we're going to ask for your cooperation. Don't block the aisles to take photos. We have professional photographers taking pictures of the ceremony. Um, and in a few weeks, you will receive the proofs, um, along with a gift certificate for a complimentary graduation photo, courtesy of Dean Wilson. Thank you, Ernie. And as you all know, you can, you, can share, um, you can share this and post it at our hashtag USCGrad and hashtag ASCJ. One more reminder for the graduates. There are three photo ops. One at the beginning of the ramp posed, one at the end of the ramp posed, and a candid shot right here where the blue X is. You ready? Awesome. May I just... First, we're going to recognize the journalism and public relations students in our master's programs who have been selected by the faculty for special honors. So will the first row of candidates please stand up and receive your diplomas. <laughs> Professor Judy Muller will announce your rewards. Hold on, hold it, hold it. I just wanted to say one thing. Professor Jennifer Proto usually, we share this duty in past years. She's sick today. First graduation she's missed in 19 years, and she sends you her love. All right. Zachary Siegel. The Center for Public Relations Research Award winner, Rebecca Osborne. Director's Award for Excellence, Alvin Rougeau. The Outstanding MS in Journalism Scholar Award, William Raymock. The Outstanding MS in Journalism Scholar Award, Yeah,
Specialized Journalist and Scholar Award for Yasin. Outstanding Specialized Journalism in the Arts Scholar Award, Paula Mardo. Outstanding Specialized Journalism in the Arts Scholar Award, Anna Deitch. The Outstanding Strategic Public Relations Scholar Award, Irene Alicia bishop -Gurin. Outstanding Strategic Public Relations Scholar Award, Juan Garcia. Madison Wild. Magalie 
Gautier. Michelle Clark. <laughs> Alexander Salve. <laughs> Julia Muir. Stephen <laughs> Ashley Boucher <laughs> Heather Kemp <laughs> Terrence Davis Julian Bertolucci Chen, 
Gonzalez. Maria Alejandro Rodriguez.
Great. Wow, congratulations all you master's students. Now, Professor Bill Sellis is gonna join me up here for the presentation of diplomas. Um, Professor Judy Muller is gonna continue reading the names and again, and again, just wanted to remind you that Professor Floto is sick and sends her love and congratulations to all the PR students. Just a reminder, same drill. Guests, please stay in your seats. We have photos coming, graduates, three positions, posed at the top and end, and a candid shot up at the top. Students, just a reminder to pre present your card to Professor Muller. Please say your name clearly as you hand her your card. First row of grand candidates are ready to go. In the first group, we are going to recognize the students who have been selected by our faculty for special recognition. These are very tough decisions. The Annenberg Journalism and Public Relations undergraduate students are among the very best here at USC. So on behalf of the faculty, it's our honor to recognize these outstanding students. Professor Muller will begin with the names. The Director's Award for Excellence, Cameron Kwan. <laughs> Jack Lyman's First Amendment Award, Matthew Linus. The Norman Corwin Award for Service and Scholarship to Kevin McAllister. Outstanding Broadcast and Digital Journalism Scholar Award to Sierra Lundberg. Outstanding Broadcast and Digital Journalism Scholar Award to Giovanni Muchias. Outstanding Broadcast and Digital Journalism Scholar Award, Brad Stryker. Outstanding Print and Digital Journalism Scholar Award, Tamara Tavitia. Outstanding Print and Digital Journalism Scholar Award to Mark Daniel. Outstanding Public Relations Scholar Award to Jeanette Mark. Outstanding Public Relations Scholar Award to Terry Meister. Furness. Aaron Siegel. Pierce Conway. Alexia Narcisse. Cynthia Blondia Timmerman. <laughs> Elizabeth Louis. <laughs> Rachel Smith. Emily Chin Noah Camarena Drew Chavez
Rania Uniftos. Alana Bracken. Megan Coyle. Alyssa Garcia. Ming Ming Jang. Jennifer Chang. Jada Reckler. Green Evans. Natalie Margentel. Lauren Day. Oh, 
Shepherdson. Brittany Reed. Christian Hall. Sabrina Lamastra. Bess Pearson <laughs> Jacob Rutger <laughs> Julia Shapiro <laughs> Kaya Brantley Janae Headley. <laughs> Patricia J. Sonic. <laughs> Kamari Dates. <laughs> and her crew. <laughs> Ikram Navia. Joyce Lee. Justice Hawk. Andrew McKagan. Megan Webster. Alan Puerta. Paul Richard Samaha Camille Wechter Naja Falahi Strum. Christine Lago. Cassidy Waters. Grace DeWitt. Hannah Vega. Mariana Duran. Joanna Alden. Ellie Blue. Megan Kurtz. Mark Salinger Christina Eileen Cameron Karina Ferris Flaxer Connor McGlynn Marisa 
Chaco. Natasha Bogal. Miranda Jimenez. Stevens, Abigail Moore, Leslie Noy, Mimi Dowdell. Casey Tamkin. Zachary Branch Joy Shen Katarina Cho Claire Colleen Baltus Olivia Cardell. Camille Jafari. Claire Wooldridge. Yvonne Tarab. Phoebe Lehman. Rebecca Sun. Samantha Chow. Tabitha Steinberg. Aaron Ramirez. Delancey Prince Courtney Carter Sarah Mitchell Christina Pekulas Russia Chayapinan Jason Chen Heidi Carrion Sarah Creeboy Where are you Where are you going? Where? Come back. Aaron Elizabeth Belchin. Now go. <laughs> Jalen Lee. Emily Lee. Bird. 
Not only you. Sylvain Shen. Sarah Elizabeth Hansen. Helen Carefoot. Diana Lee. Diana Lee. Right. Bobby Nahill. Barbara Estrada. Professor Muller, thank you. Very well done. Congratulations, everyone. We just want to remind you that we're inviting you all to join us for a reception um, right at the patio behind. And may I be the very first to welcome our new Annenberg alumni, the class of 2017. Congratulations, graduates.